On the day of my niece, Emily's wedding, whom I had raised in place of her parents, my husband was in high spirits, getting ready since the morning. You seem quite cheerful. When I spoke to him, my husband glanced at me. It's my lovely niece's wedding today. Oh yeah, you weren't invited, were you? To my husband's sarcastic remark, I remained silent. She doesn't like you, so don't interfere like that. Should I attend the wedding today? When I quietly uttered those words, my husband's expression turned somewhat startled. Are you coming without an invitation? That's outrageous. What are you so worked up about? Just forget it. Don't you dare come to that girl's wedding. With those words, my husband left the house in a hurry. Upon witnessing that, I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. Watch closely. I will definitely send you to hell. My, no, our revenge begins now. My name is Eileen, and I'm a 38-year-old working woman in a dual-income household. My husband's name is Wallace. He is four years older than me, and I met him through work. Wallace was a salesperson who frequented the company where I worked. Apparently, he found my appearance attractive, fell in love at first sight, and gave me his contact information. Feeling no harm, I started dating him. After a year of dating, Wallace proposed. The first person I shared the news with was my niece, Emily, who was 17 at the time. Emily, he proposed to me. I think I'm getting married. Really? Good for you, Mom. But if that happens, I'll be leaving the house, and I might not be able to take care of you as much, Emily. Mom, I'm already 17. Don't worry about that, and just be happy. I embraced Emily, shedding tears. There is a reason why Emily calls me Mom. I've been raising her in place of my sister, who is five years older than me. My sister Camilla was flamboyant and uninhibited compared to my reclusive personality. Despite our similar appearances, our personalities were complete opposites. My sister immediately declared her intention to live with her boyfriend upon graduating from high school and left home, cutting off all contact. Even our parents who run a business had said they couldn't just abandon my sister. However, when I was 15 and my sister was 20, she returned home with a large belly. I got pregnant. I'll give birth and raise the child here. Although our shocked parents asked for the name and the man involved, my sister could only say she didn't know. She had gotten pregnant by a man whose name and background were unknown. However, our parents couldn't abandon their daughter, so they allowed her to return home. Afterward, my sister gave birth. The newborn girl was named Emily. However, right after giving birth, my sister says something unexpected. I can't take care of Emily because I have to go to work. Once again, both my parents and I were astonished. We'll take care of you for a while, so focus on childcare. Despite my parents' announcement, my sister didn't change her opinion. I've already decided on a job. You can work at our company. My sister rejected our father's proposal. I don't want to work for my parents' company. I want to work properly for Emily. Once those words were spoken, even my parents couldn't oppose her. My sister continued speaking. So, Eileen, you should take care of Emily. Huh? Emily can go to daycare, and Eileen can take care of her during the rest of the day. Well then, that's that. In the end, unable to do anything, I ended up taking care of Emily. While my sister lived in the same house, she would leave in the early afternoon and return late at night, not taking care of Emily at all during that time. Therefore, with the help of my parents, I diligently raised Emily. I handled drop-offs and pickups to and from the daycare, often taking her to parks and reading her picture books. This way I managed parenting alongside my high school and college life. When Emily entered elementary school, I was a fourth-year university student. One day, on a holiday, I took her to a shopping mall. When we passed by a store that offered matching outfits for parents and children, a salesperson approached us. How about it? Since you're a young mother, matching outfits would suit you both. 
I briefly hesitated on whether to explain that I was Emily's aunt. Then, Emily spoke up. Mom, let's buy matching clothes. Huh? Emily, I'm your aunt, not your mom. I've actually wanted to call you that for a long time. Is it not okay? Certainly, joy welled up in my heart. For me, Emily had truly become like a daughter. From that moment, when it was just the two of us, Emily started calling me mom. I cherished those times, participating in school events together and making her lunch. That's why Emily's happiness for my marriage meant the world to me. I continued with her, saying, Next time, I'll bring my partner. If it's someone chosen by mom, they might become like a dad to me. Maybe. On the day we brought Wallace to my parents' home, we welcomed him together with my parents, sister, and Emily. However, when Wallace entered the living room, he inexplicably widened his eyes and dropped the gift he brought onto the floor. Hey, Wallace, what's wrong? Wallace seemed to snap back to reality with a start. Uh, I might have been a bit too nervous. No need to be so nervous. From there, the conversation proceeded smoothly. During the conversation, my father said to Wallace, Ideally, I'd like a male successor for our company. If Eileen and your child happen to be a boy, we'd love for him to take over. If that doesn't happen, you might have to inherit it. My father had traditional views, emphasizing blood ties and a male heir. That's why I chose not to join my father's company and instead found employment in a different major corporation. On the way back, Wallace had a serious expression. Don't take what my dad said too seriously, okay? Yeah. Wallace seemed to be contemplating something. Later, Wallace and I rented a house near my parents' home and started living together. After expressing my desire to continue being involved with Emily, he accepted her presence. Feel free to invite Emily over any time. Thank you, Wallace. This way, Emily started visiting our home frequently. Wallace also seemed to have a kind and positive relationship with Emily. On the other hand, my relationship with Wallace had become subtly strained since our marriage. I had expressed multiple times that I wanted to actively pursue starting a family. But Wallace avoided physical contact and our intimate life came to a halt. Creating a child is not something one person can achieve alone. Time passed in this way. I was 38 and Emily had turned 22. By then, Emily was living on her own. We hadn't met for a while and communication had become infrequent. She seemed to have a boyfriend from high school. And Emily had her own life. I felt both lonely and happy. Around that time, news of Emily's upcoming marriage reached me through my sister. It caught me off guard. I was honestly surprised. We've decided to have a wedding, but I won't invite you. Huh? I'm telling you not to come. Wallace will be invited, but you don't need to come. I was confused, not understanding the meaning. Emily is telling me not to come to her wedding? Despite raising her as a mother figure? Why am I the only one not invited when Wallace is? When I conveyed this to my husband, he said, Emily probably wants only her biological mother. Maybe she dislikes you? There shouldn't be any reason for that. Then why hasn't she contacted you directly? It seems like evidence of being disliked, doesn't it? I was at a loss for words. It's true, I haven't heard from Emily, who lives alone in a distant place for over six months. Has Emily truly come to dislike me? I'll be there to see Emily in her bride's attire, so don't come to the wedding. With emphasis, Wallace delivered this message. I couldn't sleep that day due to the shock. On a day approaching Emily's wedding, while working at the office, I received a call. To my surprise, the caller was Emily. Mom, sorry for calling you at work. Emily's voice on the phone sounded somewhat tense. What's wrong, Emily? What happened? I want to meet and talk. I'm coming there. Can we meet after you finish work? We made plans, and the call ended. Why bother calling the office when I have a cell phone? I wondered, but I was happy to meet Emily after such a long time. After finishing work, I hurried to the meeting place, 
and there stood a pale Emily. Emily, Mom. Emily, in tears, began to explain her situation. Mom, please listen calmly. Through our conversation, an unbelievable truth came to light. Time passed, and it was Emily's wedding day. In the morning, my husband was happily preparing. You seem to be in a good mood. When I said that, Wallace glanced at me. It's my lovely niece's wedding today. Oh yeah, you weren't invited, were you? I did not respond to Wallace's sarcastic comment. She doesn't like you, so don't interfere like that. Maybe I should attend the wedding today. When I said that quietly, my husband looked shocked. Are you coming without an invitation? That's outrageous. That's outrageous. What are you so worked up about? Just forget it. Don't you dare come to that girl's wedding. With that, Wallace left the house hastily. Inside, I felt a sense of satisfaction. Watch, I'll definitely send you to hell. Taking advantage of Wallace's departure, I changed into a dress and got ready. Opening the chapel doors with all my strength, there was the aisle. Wallace and Emily were just starting to walk down it. Several hours later, I was right in the venue for Emily's wedding. Eileen, I told you not to come. What's going on? Why are you walking down the aisle with Emily? Th this is... Emily doesn't have a father, so I'm standing in for him. At that moment, I decided to drop a bomb. That's not it, right? You're Emily's real father, aren't you? In the next moment, Emily forcefully pushed Wallace, who was standing next to her. Wallace tumbled spectacularly to the floor. Then my sister's voice echoed. Hey, Emily, what are you doing? And Eileen, what's your intention coming here without an invitation? Don't mess up the ceremony. The wedding venue became chaotic. Even our parents were looking at us with a mix of surprise and anger. Then Emily sharply shouted, Everyone, please listen to me. The venue fell silent as if a spell was cast. Please calm down. This was discussed in advance between me, my aunt, or rather my mom and me. We have the groom's permission as well. The groom approached Emily, who was wearing a wedding dress, and wrapped his arms around her shoulders. He nodded at both Emily and me. At that moment, our father walked towards us with a pale face. Wait a moment. Eileen mentioned earlier that Wallace is Emily's biological father. What does that mean? I don't understand. Emily responded to this. First, listen to this. I immediately played the voice recorder at high volume. Well, I was surprised at first. I never thought my fiancé's sister was my ex. I was surprised, too. I really liked you back then. That's why when I got pregnant, I didn't want to cause any trouble, so I disappeared. Hey, hey. Am I the only one you liked back then? Even now, of course I still like you. I can't imagine being with anyone else but you, Wallace. This was an ugly conversation between my husband and sister. Wallace and my sister's faces turned pale simultaneously. The recorded conversation continued. Looking forward to Emily's wedding. Yes, let's send her off with her real parents. Leave the troublemaker at home. Even though she's a troublemaker, you can't get a divorce, right? Our relationship and the fact that you're Emily's father can't be revealed. Yeah, and I have to inherit your father's company. That's why I didn't want to have kids with her. In the future, I'll be the president. If that happens, let's kick out Eileen and live happily together. Saying this, the two of them laughed crudely. I stopped the playback and spoke up. As you just heard, Emily's father is my husband, who is also the uncle of the bride. They are still in a relationship. They even made plans to take over the company. Upon hearing this, all the participants turned pale. Then Emily spoke up. These two fabricated lies about us disliking each other just so they could have the wedding to themselves. They even made me delete my contacts from my phone. The revelation came to light on the day I reunited with Emily. 
My sister had been feeding Emily lies, claiming that I considered her a nuisance, and that's why we couldn't contact each other. Emily initially believed this manipulation. However, one day Emily overheard my sister talking to Wallace on the phone. Understanding the true nature of their relationship from the conversation, Emily contacted my company and came to meet me. Upon investigating them later, I found that their entire conversation had been recorded. Emily pointed at my sister and said, You, pretending to be a mother figure, but the one who raised me is none other than Irene here. I've never considered you my mother, and this man could never be a father. Emily! Just as my sister tried to approach Emily, my mother slapped her. You, neglecting your duties as a mother, burdening Eileen with everything and betraying her? You're a disgrace. Seeing that, I too grabbed a stunned Wallace by the collar. Are you prepared as well? We're getting a divorce. You'll be paying hefty alimony. Huh? Divorce? What about the plan for me to become the president? This time my father shouted. There's no way I'm letting the likes of you inherit it. Called the nonsense. The attendees stared at my sister and Wallace with disdain. Prepare yourselves, because I'm sending both of you packing to hell. With those words, I kicked my sister and Wallace out. After the silence, Emily apologized to the attendees. I planned this because I couldn't forgive what my parents did, and I wanted to chastise them in front of everyone. I'm sorry for showing you something unsightly. However, I still want you to participate in the ceremony. The attendees applauded Emily's decision. That's how I ended up sitting in the mother's seat where my sister had been. The ceremony resumed, and Emily read a letter to her mother, addressed to me. I cried so much that one tissue wasn't enough. Later, the divorce between Wallace and me was finalized. I successfully claimed alimony from both my sister and Wallace. My parents disowned my sister and kicked her out of the family home. I also managed to successfully get rid of Wallace. Emily, on the other hand, severed ties with both my sister and Wallace. The two of them apparently still did not part ways and began living together in a small apartment. However, their savings had long run out and their plan for Wallace to become president had failed. They apparently have days filled with constant fighting. Two despicable people. I think they should just get along as best they can. As for me, on the other hand, after the divorce, I actually met someone and remarried right away. My new spouse has a wonderful personality and an impressive background. My father really likes him and wants him to inherit the company. What's more, to my delight, I found out about my pregnancy right after getting married. Actually, Emily was also pregnant around the same time, and we will give birth within a month of each other. Now, we are mother and daughter, but we have also become like mom friends, and I see Emily frequently. From now on, I want to cherish the happiness I've gained and live positively. <laughs>